guys and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be covering a very interesting and prevalent pathology, esophageal cancer. So let's get right into it. What is esophageal cancer? Esophageal cancer is cancer that occurs in the esophagus, which is a long hollow tube that runs from the throat to the stomach. The esophagus carries the food we swallow to our stomachs to be digested. Where does esophageal cancer begin? Esophageal cancer usually begins in the cells that line the inside of the esophagus and can occur anywhere along this hollow tube. It occurs most frequently in the middle portion of the esophagus and more men than women are prone to the development of the disease. So you can see here in my diagram on the left if we had to take a cross section through that esophageal tube, this is what the layers of the esophagus would look like. So from most interior to most exterior, you can see here that this would be the innermost layer, which is called the mucosa. And here you can see the development of the cancer and the growing of the cancer cells. Epidermology. Esophageal cancer is the eighth most frequent cancer diagnosed worldwide and causes about 400,000 deaths every year. Esophageal squamous cell carcinomas comprise about 60 to 70 percent of all cases of esophageal cancer worldwide, while esophageal adenocarcinomas account for a further 20 to 30 percent. Melanomas, leiomyosarcomas, carcinoids and lymphomas are less common types. The countries with the highest estimated national incidence rates were in Asia, Mongolia and Turkmenistan and in Africa, Malawi, Kenya and Uganda. The countries with the highest recorded rates were the UK, Netherlands, Ireland, Iceland and New Zealand. Types of carcinomas there are two main types of esophageal carcinomas, mainly squamous cell carcinomas and adenocarcinomas, which each have distinct sets of risk factors. Squamous cell carcinomas are linked to lifestyle factors such as smoking and alcohol, whilst adenocarcinomas have been linked to the effects of long-term acid reflux. Tobacco, however, is a risk factor for both types. On the diagram on the right, you can see the common places for which the cancers usually develop and squamous cell carcinomas usually occur in the esophageal tube in more or less the middle third which is somewhere around here and adenocarcinomas usually occur at the gastroesophageal junction and that's more or less here. Squamous cell carcinomas. The squamous cells are flat thin cells that line the surface of the esophagus. Squamous cell carcinomas occur most often in the middle of the esophagus and they are the most prevalent esophageal cancer worldwide. Adenocarcinomas. Male predominance is particularly strong in this type of esophageal cancer. The disease occurs about seven to 10 times more frequently in men than in women. This imbalance may be related to the characteristics and interactions of other known risk factors, including acid reflux and obesity. The long-term erosive effects of acid reflux, which is an extremely common condition, also known as gastroesophageal reflux or GERD, have been strongly linked to this type of cancer. If you guys want to know more about GERD, you can watch a video I've made that discusses GERD in detail. I'll put a link for it in the description. Long-standing GERD can induce a change of cell type in the lower portion of the esophagus in response to erosion of its squamous lining. This phenomenon, known as Barrett's esophagus, seems to appear about 20 years later in women than in men, and this may be due to hormonal factors. Having symptomatic GERD or bile reflux makes Barrett's esophagus more likely which in turn raises the risk of further changes that can ultimately lead to the adenocarcinoma. So my diagram here at the bottom basically shows a patient with long-standing GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. And in such a patient, because of that constant reflux of acid or bile back into the esophagus, 
we have a change in the cells that line the lower esophagus. And what actually happens is the cells that line the stomach have a tendency to start lining the esophagus. And this is not a very good thing because usually the esophagus is lined by squamous epithelial cells and now it starts being lined with columnar epithelial cells. And when this process happens, it's called the pathological name Barrett's esophagus. And Barrett's esophagus is actually an extremely dangerous pathology because it predisposes these patients to the development of adenocarcinomas. So what are some signs and symptoms of esophageal cancer? Difficulty in swallowing, which is called dysphagia. Weight loss without trying. Chest pain, pressure or burning in the chest. Worsening indigestion or heartburn. Coughing or hoarseness. And regurgitation or vomiting. Risk factors. It is thought that chronic irritation of the esophagus may contribute to DNA changes that cause esophageal cancer. Factors that cause irritation in the cells of the esophagus and increase the risk of esophageal cancer include drinking alcohol, having bile reflux, having difficulty in swallowing because of an esophageal sphincter that won't relax, a pathology called achalasia, drinking very hot liquids, eating few fruits and vegetables, having GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, being obese, having precancerous changes in the cells of the lower esophagus, which is called Barrett's esophagus, undergoing radiation treatment to the chest or upper abdomen, and finally, smoking. Complications of esophageal cancer. As esophageal cancer advances, it can cause complications such as obstruction of the esophagus. Cancer may make it difficult or impossible for food and liquid in advanced cases to pass through the esophagus. So you can see very clearly here on my diagram on the right, a growing tumor within the esophagus is going to cause an obstruction and where food and liquid normally passes smoothly through here, we're going to have some kind of challenge and obstruction due to the growing of this tumor. Pain, advanced esophageal cancer can cause pain. Bleeding in the esophagus. Bleeding is usually gradual, but can be sudden and severe at times. Tests and diagnosis. The use of a scope to examine the esophagus, which is called an endoscopy. During an endoscopy, a hollow tube equipped with a lens, an endoscope, is passed into the esophagus. While this process is being done, a sample of tissue for testing called a biopsy can also be done. The biopsy is taken so that cellular studies can confirm the diagnosis of a malignancy. Computer tomography, CT or CAT scan. The CT scan uses x-rays to produce detailed cross-sectional images of the body. CT scans are not usually used to diagnose esophageal cancer, but they can help to show where it is in the esophagus and if it has spread to nearby organs and lymph nodes or to distant parts of the body. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scan. Like CT scans, MRI scans provide detailed images of soft tissues in the body. But the MRI scans use radio waves and strong magnets instead of x-rays. Like the CT scans, MRIs are not usually used to diagnose esophageal cancer but can help to show where it is in the esophagus and if it has spread to nearby organs or if the cancer has metastasized. Positron emission tomography or PET scan. For a PET scan, a form of radioactive sugar known as fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG is injected into the blood. The amount of radioactivity used is very low and will pass out of the body over the next day or so. Cancer cells in the body grow rapidly, so they absorb large amounts of radioactive sugar. For about an hour, the patient is moved onto a table in the PET scanner. So basically, the PET scan is actually used to confirm the, a malignancy. The cancer cells will take up the sugar, and then images are produced from certain parts of the body, which show colorful light-ups from where the cancer cells are growing. 
Bronchoscopy A bronchoscope is used to view the airways and check for any abnormalities. This exam may be done for cancer in the upper part of the esophagus to see if it has spread to the windpipe, which is the trachea, or the tubes leading from the windpipe into the lungs, which are the bronchi. For this test, a lighted, flexible fiber optic tube called a bronchoscope is passed through the mouth or the nose and down into the windpipe and bronchi. Esophageal cancer staging. Tests used in the staging of esophageal cancer include CT or computer tomography and positron emission tomography or PET scans. The stages of esophageal cancer are Stage 1. This cancer occurs in the superficial layers of the cells lining the esophagus. Stage 2. The cancer has invaded deeper layers of the esophagus lining and may have spread to nearby lymph nodes. Stage 3. The cancer has spread to the deepest layers of the wall of the esophagus and to nearby tissues or lymph nodes. Stage 4. The cancer has spread to other parts of the body. So what is the treatment for esophageal cancer? There are several treatment options available. We're now going to talk about the surgical approach. Option 1. Surgery to remove very small tumors. If the cancer is very small and confined to the superficial layers of the esophagus and hasn't spread, the surgeon may recommend removing the cancer and the margin of the healthy tissue that surrounds it. Option 2. Surgery to remove a portion of the esophagus. Esophagectomy. During an esophagectomy, the surgeon removes the portion of the esophagus that contains the tumor and nearby lymph nodes. The remaining esophagus is reconnected to the stomach. Option 3. Surgery to remove part of the esophagus and the upper portion of the stomach. Esophagogastrectomy. During an esophagogastrectomy, the surgeon removes part of the esophagus, nearby lymph nodes, and the upper portion of the stomach. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a drug treatment that uses chemicals to kill cancer cells. Chemotherapy drugs are typically used before or after surgery in people with esophageal cancer. When used before, it's called neoadjuvant therapy and when used after, it's called adjuvant therapy. Chemotherapy can also be combined with radiation therapy. Radiation therapy. Radiation therapy uses high-powered energy beams to kill cancer cells. Radiation can come from a machine outside of the body that aims the beams at the cancer cells, called external beam radiation, or radiation can be placed inside the body near the cancer cells, and this is called brachytherapy. Radiation therapy is most often combined with chemotherapy in people with esophageal cancer. It can be used before or after surgery. Radiation therapy is also used to relieve complications of advanced esophageal cancer, such as when a tumor grows large enough to stop food from passing to your stomach, which as we discussed earlier, is called an esophageal obstruction. Side effects of radiation to the esophagus include sunburn-like skin reactions, painful or difficult swallowing, which is called dysphagia, and accidental damage to nearby organs, such as the lungs and the heart. Something that is always important to remember is that prevention is always better than cure. So what are some of the preventative measures we can take to prevent an esophageal cancer? We could quit smoking, drink alcohol in moderation, if at all, eat more fruits and vegetables, and maintain a healthy body weight. So in conclusion, I'd just like to say, maintaining an active and healthy lifestyle is absolutely essential in the prevention of esophageal cancer. And it is said that 69% or seven in every 10 persons can actually prevent the development of esophageal cancer by making smarter health choices. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you found this presentation very informative and interesting. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like a copy of this presentation, you can click the link in the description.
Take care and see you guys next time.